He's carrying it. Oh, no. He can win it! They stay alive! We go to game five. They will take him to switch. Now, with a daily strike, he puts it through. He's been going for this stuff all season. Oh, my goodness! Oh, my Derek! Just to hit that on the shot. Difficult decision has been made to cancel the RLCSX World we Championships. We also uh, unfortunately have lost our world. It's no secret that everyone wanted a land. It's been two whole years since that fateful day. Finally, we're back, ready to answer the question that's torn through the community since RL Esports was dramatically forced online. Like, we're still like better than you. He's just bun buns. Europe are the faster average speed region. I would say it matters a whole lot. In Stockholm, there'll be no more speculation and no more excuses. But before the entire planet was so rudely put on hold, who held the historical edge in the battle for regional supremacy? Way back in 2015, international lands were a distant dream, and an unbeatable team materialized on each side of that vast Atlantic divide. Anyone old enough to insist that rule one is keeping the ball up at zero seconds because it is. will remember flip side tactics. With pro to this day Coxir providing early era flair, Mike Rules and Marky Dudar pinged in the passes. Oh, see, there's Coxir, man. We were winning every every tournament all the little tournaments for 100 quid here and there and we were by far the most dominant team in the region i think in north america it was i by power another good shot from gibbs and that should be an easy goal sad junior and that whole thing just really developed over a pretty long period of time what a shot oh. by sad Cronovi. now Cronovi with an opportunity that net is open if you can just get up and into it oh, there he goes gonna sink that one in and their permanent goalie the undisputed rl esports goat we got bored and we would start counting goals against us and we would hope for less than five in a tournament the rlcs season one announcement changed the game with twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars on offer for the winners alone poor old gibbs was ruthlessly ditched for gambit so they dropped me even though i was the best player on the team but it had to be done to be fair for all the other teams with eu just that little bit better flipside were favorites especially as ibp who'd also replaced sad junior with lachinio were forced to sub in over zero for gambit I think we were very heavy underdogs. I think most people thought that. Um, we were absolutely dreading the bracket draw when we saw it because Flipside, in our opinion, were the number one seed out of Europe. And we we spent an entire month like just trying our hardest to to come up with something that might work against them. Now Pernobi coming up with over zero company. They tries to drop it in. Oh, what a play from Pernobi. Throwing some spin a on that <laughs> one early. Defense coming out from this I by power team. Defense and I by power, not things you oh, usually talk about zero. at the same time. He's carrying it. Oh, no. They can oh. put it in. They stay alive. We go to game five. What was this coming off the wall? The exciting new factor of crowd energy spurred IBP to the grand finals unbeaten. Flipside soon got their rematch. Now Mike Rules gets it over zero. Marky passes out to Cookser, who takes a shot, and it's going to be the lead for Flipside. Mike Rules. His touch sends it still towards the goal. Can they finish it off? And there's Kronovi. Tries to put it over. Mike Rules drops it. Cooks takes oh! the shot. It doesn't matter. I by power are the RLCS champion. Over zero, Lachino and Kronovi made it North America one, Europe nil. They still shouldn't have dropped me. NA fans, look away now. In Season 2 in Amsterdam, Flipside had their moment. In Los Angeles in Season 3, Substitute Turbo Pulsar lifted his first trophy with Northern Gaming. And in Season 4, in Washington DC, he lifted his second and Gale Force Esports' first. It was now NA1 EU3, with the last three World Championship Grand Finals featuring zero teams from North America. You know, during seasons two, three, and four, North America didn't really know what they were doing. I mean, we had uh, some mechanics, but 
the expertise that we had in the game and the knowledge we had of how to play the game was outmatched. And you could see that in the gameplay. You could see that in all of the uh, the series and the grand finals, especially, like you said, we didn't even make it to the grand finals in those seasons. So we had a lot of work to do. Uh, and when I say we, I mean North America. We didn't know what was going on. I think Europe kind of pioneered a few different metas and were just better overall at some of the early game strategies. They were just stupid, basically. <laughs> Going into 2018 Season 5, North America needed a spark. Season 1 winner Kronovi would provide it. At Elite 2017, during the off-season, he led new team G2 to North America's first major since his RLCS victory. NA was back. And then a roster change happened that would elevate them even further. And you saw Justin with the mind games, people kind of comparing him to an early day Squishy Muffins, and I think he is living up to that hype perfectly. Justin made energy like incredibly better. Like I remember, um, you know, everyone in the pro scene like knew about Justin, like his rival series run. And um, when I heard energy was picking him up, because originally like it's not really, it's not really like a week or anything. Like, I think it's already been talked about before, but like energy was trying to get J naps. And that didn't work out, and once I heard they were getting Justin, I was like, they'll be fine. Like, Justin's gonna be insane. Garrett G, Fireburner, and New Kid on the Block Justin waltzed through NA League play with a perfect 7-0 record. Problem was, a team from Europe was enjoying something of a dynasty of their own. How did it feel being the best team in Europe and the world for multiple seasons in a row? Felt good. Brilliant. <laughs> no, okay, okay. <laughs> Every time we played them, I felt so so good on the field. Uh, I was like, okay, this time we're gonna win them. And every time they they beat us, like I think in five in game five, uh, and I was like, not this time, but next time. They even created you know the Gale Force slash Dignitas dynasty, which is still a feat of tournaments and performances that is unmatched to this day. Ahead of season five, reigning champs Gale Force became Dignitas. From deep within a cauldron of chanting fans and clapping hands, NRG had one big question to answer. How will Justin play versus like a whole crowd? He's never played outside of his bedroom. But this time Devo, just able to clear the lines, but only for a brief second, because Justin is gonna win it for NRG! Like this is like the game everyone was waiting for. And then of course Dignitas has been dominating Europe. It's going to be a bloodbath for this game. Justin all the way down, off the cross, but follow up! First blood! They're struggling to control any sort of pace. And now Garrett, oh, oh, what a double tap! North America had its first Worlds finalist since Season 1. And yet Dignitas, despite needing two best of sevens in a row when they inevitably crushed the lower bracket, were still favourites. Still the mid is well, that's going to slow down Team Dignitas, who are now on the defensive. Still zero goes, oh my goodness! Justin keeps it alive, Turbo pass it there, bounces into the corner, energy still around, Justin is there for the shot, and Justin, this is Rocket League! I don't think we were thinking much in the final, to be honest, when we got scored on, I mean, I think, I think there was a time I tapped Turbo on the belly, uh, right before he went into the overtime, you know, I tapped on the belly, like, come on, that's fine, uh, I don't, I don't think we were worried too much. Turbo Pulse with it up high, gets the flick, Turbo! When it came to lands, Justin had now been there, done that, and got the t-shirt. Despite it now being NA1 EU4, NRG alone would ensure North America would now be taken seriously. But increasingly, they weren't alone. Dignitas did not blink. In EU League play, they didn't lose. In the EU playoffs, they didn't lose. And at the Las Vegas LAN, all the way up to the Grand Finals, they didn't lose. It wouldn't have helped the poor NA crowd that their region was choking. With no North American sides in the upper semis, hope was fading fast. They're gonna need every single fan in this building cheering for them. There's a oh, shot in from Torment. Forces Kami to make a touch, picked off Great by pitch. Squishy Open, Nick Cloud 9 Gimmick picks up the goal. A miss from him, Gimmick will play over the side, Squishy puts up the back he'll look for Gimmick here across the field, dropping it down, Gimmick just goes for the goalie. Dignitas, Cloud 9 who do you got? Dignitas, Dignitas, Dignitas has got this one easy, Squishy. 
Has a chance, going for the double tap himself. Bounces it in as well. Switchy bounces to himself. He gets Flip, it. Racer. Can he do it? Squishy, Squishy go go Squishy, Gimmick and Torment had gone all in on Flair and won, evolving the flip reset from party trick to competitive must-have in just one match. Their robot-like precision had lasered through Dignitas' pragmatic playstyle, dooming their dynasty to outdatedness. While Europe still led overall, it felt like North America were back on top. The off-season's E-League 2018 exacerbated the Dignitas downturn. WSOE then compounded it. Passing it out to the middle, the shot off the crossbar, and follow-up shot, and Chicago scores it! Honestly, I've had a lot of downtrends and uptrends in my career, uh, but yeah, I'm kinda I was kind of used to it, and we just tried our best to make it work, uh, but that team didn't really work out. As NA teams reached both events grand finals, the Dignitas dynasty formally died as KDOP joined Fairy Peak and Scrub Killer on Renault Vitality. By season start, they were EU's best. Meanwhile, in NA, NRG had pulled away again. The favorite team from North America had to be NRG. They had a, a dominant season up to that point. For Europe, definitely uh, Renault Vitality. Vera missing his challenge, Justin recovers the shot Ooh. from Justin! It's a pass off the crossbar, J-Nabs! Oh, oh, oh A G2-shaped spanner in the works gave us the grand final matchup we'd all expected. Just a little bit sooner than we expected it. This is Kata, on the top of one, very big, looking to tie the game, oh. he puts it on the back, one. nobody was home, here's Scrub Killer! Now we're gonna finish it off, now we're all tied up for one piece. Here's Garrett with a shot, but Kata's got it. Scrub Killer went two though, and Justin will find the shot, and there's the tie game! Vitaly looking to play spoiler, k gets an early shot and it's in! After season 7, I felt extremely disappointed because, I mean, even if you go through the track record, we season 5 got second, season 6 almost didn't make worlds and somehow did, and then season 7, another good online season just to get 8th. Um, it felt like there was nothing I could do. It felt like it just was this impossible task that I was not going to be able to, to accomplish. As NRG fell short again and k took revenge on Cloud9, this whole thing was suddenly vitalities to lose. But G2, with the crowd elevating each aspect of their game, had momentum of their own. The pass across, Chicago's there, the shot goes in, and G2 take the lead! This G2 offense flowing together. And Chicago beats two, Rizzo comes through! G2 are on fire, and they will be headed to the grand final! I had a lot of respect going into that final, but given the fact that Vitality destroyed all of the North American teams who were supposed to be the top contenders from our region, I was shaken, man. I did not expect too much from G2. I thought it was Vitality's time to win that grand final and to destroy North America single-handedly. They have to get out of their own half. Kata, he tries. Rizzo at least slows him down. Kata, can't stop him there. Around the corner, Chicago, and bounces off the rim. Scrub, he grabs the ball. Petty off the kill, and J-Nabs blows it downfield. Cherry Peak, midfield, he's under one. Cherry Peak, carrying this to Kata. over Chicago, in front of the box, Kata, off the backboard, scrub, he shot just one, Barry Pace scores, Vitality take game one! So G2 going into it, I was like, they may have a 40% chance to win this. After that game went overtime, I'm like, maybe 10% at that point. How fitting is it that it's Scrub Killer, the rookie, who puts the ball in the back of the net in the grand finals to try to get himself a, a world championship win. Scrub Killer has the demo, Kata up around, Barry Pace down, Barry Pace scores! And with that, Vitality take it all! Incredible Kadop's third world title brought him level with old teammate Turbo. But for this story, all that matters is North America 2, Europe 5. The regions were now pretty much on par, especially with EU and NA teams winning two each of the dream hacks that span 2019. The trophy they all wanted, though, was this one. 
Before RLCS Season 8, something magical happened. Turbo Pulsar left not just Dignitas, but Europe entirely, aiming to bring success to perennial nearly men NRG. After Firebrenner retired, we actually were looking at two players uh, who really wanted to join. Uh, Torment, who was on Cloud9 at the time, and uh, Turbo wanted to join. Um, and at first, for me, I was like, uh, we were just going to go with Torment because he didn't have to move. Like, Torment had just had like the Season 6 performance. And um, if you look back at Turbo's season, uh, Season 7, they almost got relegated. Like, it wasn't a good season for, for Turbo or Dignitas. So, Torment was just the easy pick. And then what happened was we went to Dreamhack Valencia and Turbo absolutely destroyed us with Gabe and Classics. He just seemed really, really motivated and he absolutely destroyed us. So, we ended up changing. To, to wanting turbo and energy was down and it just went from there. The dynamic was great in theory, but in practice, it was even better. Justin has a pass oh. to turbo. SSG, hold on. Justin off the ceiling, carrying this, looking for a flip and he gets it. Honestly, it's all over. NRG wins another one, North American regional champs. In December 2019, Madrid's Palacio Vistalegre hosted the season eight world championship LAN. We knew the event would be special, but what we couldn't have known was that this would be our last glimpse of this great rivalry for two entire years. Thankfully, it didn't disappoint. Here's Garrett on the thing. Oh. Has an open net, puts it away. He's done that before. The moment that has come for NRG. One more series. Trying to slip it through defenders, oh. and the dunk is there. Yukio, he puts it over. KDOP versus Turbo, Europe versus North America, Garrett G and Justin avenging their season 5 heartbreak alongside one of the men who caused it. Everybody knew that they were going to at least compete and make it to the grand finals. I didn't know if they were going to take it against Vitality, but they had the best possible chance with Turbo. Up again, Turbo Pulsar, he's unrelenting at this moment, and he's absolutely unstoppable! NRG. You almost think they have to get this one. And Turbo oh. put him in the right spot, but Kane up. What a ball this was! And now for Turbo. To just in. Who's he got left? What a ball! What a ball! Oh, 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 oh. Very big. He's got past two players. Looks for a bump. Garrett G clears. Look. Justin! 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 With one strike of the ball, Justin delivered a new era. We no longer saw Europe and North America. Instead, it was Turbo Pulsar's record-breaking fourth world championship, Justin banishing his season five demons, and Garrett G, the only player to have reached every single RLCS LAN, finally fulfilling that year's old promise. These three players, just like Vitality, had brought us so much joy. Personal journeys now superseded the region from which they started, and our shared euphoria bridged each side of that vast Atlantic divide. Nothing could ever take us back to the way it was. Then we couldn't play each other for two years and all that frustration led to it totally going back to the way it was. Even when I watch Europe, it's just so, like, it's underwhelming to me. No need to touch EU yet. I mean, we're only at seven, so obviously... Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I think if we could play online with even Ping, I think NA would sign people. It's time to get some more minor regions represented in the list. Number seven is going to be Space Station Gaming. North America also going to be in here, I think, <laughs> at seven. If there was a land in all six acts, like the NA teams would be would at least play less scared than EU. Everything would be trending on Twitter right now if NA had done what EU's just done. But because EU's just done this, and for us, it's kind of like any other day at the office. It's like, oh, yeah, be NA again, whatever. I mean, it's just normal. What about SRG? Oh, they trash on EU. North America figured out that was the future of our Rocket League about a year and a half ago. About a year and a half and, ago. And in Europe still hasn't figured that out. Wait, are you this losing on NA? Oh! Oh! oh, oh my God. God.